Hello, and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a really terrifying movie, one of my favorites, called The Shining. The Shining was made in 1980 by Stanley Kubrick. It stars Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Scatman Crothers, Danny Lloyd, this is a slow burn psychological thriller that I love. If you look through my movie section playlist, you'll see Dr. Sleep, which was a continuation from this. And I really love that movie. It's so different than The Shining, and it has elements of The Shining, like little flashbacks, which are done great. So I recommend that. But this is the 1980 film based on the novel by Stephen King, which came out in 1977. This type of slow burn psychological thriller, it's different from other movies that I recommend to people or friends, you know, that uh, people you meet and you watch movies with. I equate this to like Blade Runner is for sci-fi. I could show people Blade Runner, which I love, but I don't get the reaction like they love it. It's a drag sometimes. Now... I'm not saying this is the same thing, but in a, in a horror type movie, it's a psychological thriller, so it does build up, and it's got that premise, but it's the same type of reaction. I love this movie. Oh, let's watch The Shining, and I get the mixed um, uh, reactions, which is interesting because, you know, you have friends and you have similar things, and you kind of know what movie's going to like, and you know, we're going to love Lethal Weapon, Rambo, The First Blood, things like that, so on and so forth. But The Shining is a special case. It has such weird history with the location, with the filming itself. Stanley Kubrick being known to be a little weird and having these uh, huge takes you have to take. This behind-the-scenes stuff, the whole thing is fascinating. And if you watch any, what was it, the last 15 years or so, 20 years, there's been a boom in ghost hunters and ghost adventures and all these silly things which ghost adventures is fun i watch it but it's all bullshit scam nonsense they highlight this place that was filmed at and where stephen king had a incident so to speak in his room and the plot is pretty much um jack nicholson is a writer takes a job to oversee a hotel in a winter place and you figure, okay, this would be a great opportunity, get his writing done. And it turns out him, his wife, and his kid are in a, um, I guess you could say a haunted hotel. But it really has to do with the child's ability called The Shine, which I think Catman Scruthers has also. And he, he's trying to help Danny to some extent, the little kid. And um, his life just falls apart he was an alcoholic and he had stopped drinking after he heard his son so there is a history there and it just falls apart he deteriorates and it becomes this terrifying um just ordeal for the wife and child and there's not a lot of cast in this i mean you get these um uh, um i don't know visions and Things you have actors, you know, people come and go, but it's so centered on this this group. It's fascinating. The slow build, it's just tension. It's like weird. The camera angles are even catch me. But like I said in the beginning, this is when I recommend this and I watch it with people, I get weird reactions. It's not exactly um, a winner. You know, uh, Halloween's one of my favorite movies, but it's got a style and a pacing. You watch it with somebody, you know, they're probably going to like it, but they'll roll their eyes or, you know, God forbid you watch fucking Jason or Friday the 13th or how do you spoofed kind of Nightmare on Elm Street. But you get what I'm saying. There's a pacing and there's a beats to it. This one's all over the place in that way, but it builds it up right. The sound, the eeriness, the atmosphere, it all works on so many levels. This is one of the, you know... Um, moments in time that are captured that 
you know, filmmakers and uh, historians and people who study film are going to look at. I think they even put this in one of those, you know, archive, we got to keep it forever type thing. There's so much here and so little characters that it feels you really get immersed in this life or this ordeal that's going on. And you feel yourself wrapped up in it. You can almost... um put yourself in these places. Now, I'm not a well-traveled person. I might fancy myself a writer, but I don't go to hotels and stay in places, but I love camping. And there's just this feeling of, you know, isolation. You're in a snowstorm and you're stuck in this hotel. It's kind of, it's haunted. The sun is connecting to things. The hotel just affects the father and he fucking loses it. And, you know, you got red rum is popular. It's been in the culture now. With the little kid, and here's Johnny coming through the door with the axe, which is the picture on the thumbnail of the um, thing. It's iconic. It's got such praise, and I still find this mixed bag of reactions when, or, or throughout my life, showing the movie because I love the movie. I love the book. I think Stephen King was actually upset with the how it deviated from the book. But I mean, I don't know what you can say now. Um, this is a uh, iconic movie. It is, you know, lasted the test of time. It's still highlighted. It's still looked into for its, you know, symbolism and themes and what's going on. What does this really mean? It's got so much of that weight. And I also, in the beginning, talked about Dr. Sleep, which is the... You know, I'll give spoilers, but it's a continuation of the story and the hotel itself in a way where it's kind of used as a character piece. It's pretty good. I, I, I love the way they deviated from the methods of this movie. They didn't try to redo Stanley Kubrick's work here. And Dr. Sleep is a highly recommended movie. It's one of those gems you find. It's really, oh, well, it's Hugh, Hugh and McGregor. So I guess it's like mainstream but it didn't feel like it when it came out it was like it was almost like i found an indie movie but we have so much done on the shining i mean i think there's like um uh, you know, I don't know two remakes or something like that there's like i said so much behind the scenes um such innovative stuff with um you know the way he used the cameras the music the soundtrack everything just seems to work and it's a such a highly recommended movie by the way like 2001 space odyssey i'm not a big fan of um that's another one of those things where people recommend and i get the same they must have the same reaction i'm having now where it's fascinating to them they love it but i watch it and i go okay i see the beauty in some parts but it doesn't come together well for me and i think that's what this my movie might do I got a feeling you watch this movie, you've never seen it before, you like uh, the myth of Jack Nicholson and, you know, the performances he's done and this is highlighted always, so I feel you gotta watch it. I think this is gonna hit a wide um, audience for new people, but I think there's gonna be a disconnect here and there. It's not the same movie making style. I don't know if it's, you know, part of the culture now, how we... Um, you know, eat content and how we, you know, are always, well, you know what? I think you could look at it like, what would, did you, I, I, I'm looking at the, uh, wiki page now, but I was trying to think of the exorcist and the way they did a TV show. And if you did eight episodes, seasons, like could, could you make this more? Hmm. Actually, I could see that happen. I could see this being put on now, um, HBO or, uh, you know, Hulu or something, and do a series of The Shining. Because if you connect the Doctor Sleep and the Shining movie, taking out the remakes and stuff, because I'm not so familiar with them, you've got an interesting premise there, and it's not only has to do with the time in between the movies, Right, so if the first movie and the second movie, the kid's grown up and he tries to help a kid with abilities like he had when he was a child. Now, 
there's not many spoilers in that sense, but the kid survives in the first movie. The Jack Nicholson um, is not able to kill them with the axe. <laughs> Although there's like a moment where you're cheering for the like it's 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 demented, but he does does, does such a good performance in this. Um, but I could see this being ushered out now and reinvigorated with uh today's style and me going oh you know what it's not for me i do that with like star trek nowadays like i'm getting to that age i'm 50 i could see the um the same types of ideas and feelings that i noticed in people older when i was younger you know you don't grasp these things this just doesn't work for you it's not you know you don't see the same things in it and i think if this movie was released again it would still get a wide audience. I mean, it's a, I think it's a great movie, but just like Blade Runner, when you look back at it, I think there's a pacing issue with people. There's a, and by the way, it's different to say, you know, Blade Runner is a sci-fi, it has pacing issues and people, it's drawn out and saying, oh, well, this is a psychological thriller. It's supposed to, but still there's a, um, I think it's done better here. But I'm only using it for comparison because it's such a, um, you know, high bar. It's just great movies uh, that are looked back on and, you know, they are taken apart, they're inspected, they're given new meaning to see. There's so many things about this movie that when you look back on, you go look at the um, IMBD and Wikipedia, you have so much stuff. Even with the press release and when it was released and how it kept getting cut down. <laughs> um, it's just so much. But it's a great movie. I totally recommend it. If you're into horror, a psychological horror, a slow bubbling cauldron that just becomes unmanageable. This fractured psyche. Uh, and it is a kind of connection in Dr. Sleep where the kid comes back and he kind of has a um, talk with the entities in the in the place, but it's not so highlighted here. And again, I'm a big fan of Stephen King's work. I can go back. I've done Christine and things like that. This is like, again, this is one of those weird things. When I watch it, or I'm always fascinated. I'm always finding new things. But unlike other movies, when I recommend this and watch it with people, I get such different responses. And I guess... That's its charm, too. Uh, and also, it's not just, like I said, it's, you know, horror. So if I'm showing somebody, uh, you know, a slasher film, you know, they know what they're getting. This is such powerful performances. It pulls it through to the end, in my opinion. It just carries you. But I do see some of the, you know, I don't know if I would look into it like a critic and say, okay, well, objectively, this is this, and what's subjective. I think there's a great film here. It's, like I said, uh, stood the test of time. It keeps getting looked at and dissected and, and, you know, looking for new things. And if you haven't watched it, I totally recommend The Shining from 1980. I think there's a lot of them now. Um, you know what? I'm tempted to go actually look. Because I thought I liked a couple of other things here and there. And I'm not sure if they were direct remakes or like a reboot. Because what people will do is, I think, if Stephen King has an issue with a movie and it's not like his book, I think people look to make it more accurate. So they'll come out with The Shining, whatever, 19 fucking 80, something around. You know what? I'm going to look. I'm going to do this right now. Oh, my. No, no. Let me see. The Shining film. Yeah, it was a miniseries in 1997. The fucking opera in 2016. <laughs> uh, Alright, so that's it. I do remember the miniseries. Let me check this out. Mm. Alright, so it was a three hour miniseries. I'd have to revisit this because I don't have a good memory of it. But I do remember the actors and actresses, and I could see it in my head a little bit. Hmm. But, like I said, there's a man, he's trying to invigorate his writing, takes a job 
taking care of a um, hotel in the winter. His son's got abilities, connects with this uh, residue of, you know, past experiences in the hotel. It tries to give him visions, and there's a little bit of plot you can try to figure out what's going on. And the father loses it. His sanity is gone. He's just flipping the fuck out. And he tries to murder his family. And I think it's also revealed that the past caretaker did the same thing. So, once again, I recommend The Shining. You can't say enough good things, but I do want to point out that little discrepancy with the way I get reactions from this movie over my life and watching it and sitting around with people. And one of the movies I say, we got to watch, especially, you know, for my girlfriends and loves. There's a real um, varied responses to this movie, which I find really interesting. And maybe you'll give me some of your input, some of your experiences. Leave them in the comments. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And I wish you all the best. Take care.